back at it another week. Uh, as you as you're overall looking at this team, coaching them, the progression. What steps do you need to see after last week's meet? Well, eliminate the errors. You know, we've got to we got to put together a complete meet, which we don't feel like we've done. You know, our first meet, we felt like we had <clears throat> some consistency moving forward, and then we got into a little place where we're having mistakes and. Um, digging holes and then having to get out of them. And the lesson and you know, getting out of them, is a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that. But um, at some point in time, you don't want to do that. You want to just have momentum from first person to last person in the lineup. And uh, we, we had some flashes of greatness this um, Friday at home and, and certainly a great win. But you need to you know, get back in the gym and polish that rock and know that uh, you're going to get better for the following week. With, with Kennedy's bar routine right there, she hasn't done that. I mean, in her year. No, but but you know the the, the thing they practice every day and is is getting into the handstand and getting that vertical position and, and locking out. And she got a little bit past the vertical, uh, which is an aggressive mistake. You know, this kind of handstand is going to get a huge deduction, but this kind of handstand gets no deduction. So she was going for that no deduction. Would you rather her make that aggressive mistake? Like yep. You said? Uh, yep. Yeah, I, yeah, because especially right now in the season, when you know we're we're still, I think, improving. You know, these these short handstands becomes a really bad habit, and we've got you know kids that are just locking it out every time, and um, and she's one of those, and she just didn't get tight soon enough. We've seen other sports people fighting for that one spot, whatever it may be. Is it, is it kind of like that with that sixth spot during the the floor routine? Well, there was no doubt in our mind that McKenna Kelly was going to be that sixth person, and. Um, we thought for a while, well, we'd put Kennedy there, or we put Sarah there, and uh, we put Maya there, and it, it just hit, and it just it clicked. And, and it, so I, I think it's a, a spot that she's very comfortable with right now, but that doesn't say that it's, it's uh, etched in stone. So why did she separate herself from the other two? Consistency. Just, you know, good landings and, and a consistent performer. And, you know, we have, uh, for her entire career, not used her at the end of the lineup, kept her earlier in the lineup just because we felt like she does better when you get there, warm up, and, and let her go. And uh, she has managed this really well. And, you know, she uses the preparation that we give them through the week. And in the inner squad, she uses that to prepare her for the competition. And um, she has really learned to manage herself very well. Is that a prominent slot, that, that final, final one? Well, if everything goes well and, and you do, in fact, build momentum like we did Friday night on floor, you know, with the exception of Kennedy going out of bounds, that was a, a, a pretty building process. And uh, the, the routines got, got better and the scores got higher, and, I, and we felt like that was the right thing to do. So, you know, that's, that's, it's about building momentum and being able to maintain that through the meet. You brought up in the past how girls at the beginning of rotations tend to get scored a little lower because the mm -hmm. Do you think that's kind of what happened to Maya in the past? Or oh, that's definitely, the you know, the judges need to learn to judge the routine that they're seeing and not the, not where they're placed in, in the order of things. And um, putting Maya at the end of the lineup, uh, she's she's the best floor person we have right now. And putting her at the end of the lineup, I think, is, is a very deserving thing. But Maya and... Aaron Mekadag are two of the best collegiate beam workers in the country, and they're our first two people. And the judges need to judge the athlete and the routine that they're seeing and not the place that they are in the lineup. Have you ever had someone who, who goes out of routine like Maya does mentally because it seems like nothing ever bothers her? We asked her about going last in that prominent six role, and she's like, uh, yeah, whatever. It well, it's, a, it's the ice water in your veins thing and I think she's very comfortable with that routine she I mean there's, there's, nobody outworks her and um, she everything she does she is uh, meticulous in the process she's a great communicator and you know when there's an issue or a problem she brings it to the forefront and you know we analyze it and and fix it and she just this, this is kind of the athlete she is so no you no one you would compare her to mentally um yeah I would maybe say she's a lot like Jesse Jordan um, you know, Jessie was our anchor on beam for like three years of, of her four years. And I think that I would compare her to Jessie, just very methodical in what she does. And uh, repetition is a good thing. And she continues to repeat day in and day out the same good performance.
We talked to Lexi a little bit about her, but how has uh, this team embraced um, Gracie and, and her presence on this team? Well, it's Gracie and the whole family, and you know she's got siblings, and um, the, the whole family is is suffering with the the brain tumor that that this child has, and the fact that it's inoperable, and um, she keeps you know going going for treatments, and you know praying praying for a miracle and I think there's a tremendous amount of power in prayer and the more people that we can can touch that can can pray for her wellness and uh, some kind of recovery um, the more blessed she'll be. Does it kind of just hit home because she is a gymnast and that's how they found the tumor? She was having a balance issue at a gymnastics meet that she was in in Houston and um, the doctors there or, or someone there recommended that she you know seek some medical attention right away so they saw a doctor in Houston and that doctor you know recommended that they see someone else and she ultimately ended up at MD Anderson in Houston and that's where her initial treatment began. Have you ever heard of something like that someone getting diagnosed yeah. with something like gymnastics? No oh yeah yeah um, just because it, it, it's a, it's a bad it, it presents itself as a balance issue and so much of what we do in gymnastics is about balance and um, Yes, we, we've had kids come through our gymnastics, our, our age group, our program gymnastics here, and we've seen issues and thought kids had problems and sent them to the pediatrician, and, you know, there were bigger issues than, uh, than could be treated with, a, you know, an aspirin and, you know, go to bed early. So, um, no, this, this, this baby is, is truly, um, it's a very serious brain tumor, and uh, we're praying for a miracle. How have you seen, I guess, Lexi and her bond grow over the past year or so? It's been, it's been tremendous. I mean, the they first came in the gym last year. It was a, a wish, you know, one of the you know dream come true. And um, she spent a half a day with the kids in the gym before we went on one of our trips. And uh, it's been a very, very close relationship ever since. And the family is just absolutely remarkable. The dad's a farmer in the Eunice area, and it's just a very, very close knit family. What was your reaction when you first heard her story? I mean, was it just kind of one of those instant we got to do something type of deal? Um, no, you just kind of fall in love with her in the family. They're just, they're just, they're, they're just plain Louisiana, just good people. And they, you know, like I said, the daddy's a farmer and, uh, the mom is a, a, a teacher and they just work hard and, and love hard. And this is their baby. How will the crowd be all Sarah Finnegan? In, uh, in Columbia? There'll be a lot of Finnegan's in the crowd, you know, and I, I know her dad and her family will be there and, you know, that, that's always, and it's a great place to compete and we go back, it's the, fir it's the first time of four that we'll be going to Missouri in, in this last half of our season. <clears throat> Although this arena is not where we're going to be competing, this is at the university, but um, the St. Louis is the other three destinations when we go back to Missouri. How important is it for you to get them familiar with this trip? Um, Maya touched on it a little bit to go to Missouri just to, I don't know, get the, the thoughts going of, of postseason, I guess. Yeah, and it'll, um, this week will be just at the university, so it'll be a, you know, a collegiate meet. And I've been there before. I don't know if any of these kids have been there b before. I know Maya has not. So if the senior has not, then the rest of the kids have not. And the last time we went there, the power went off or something in the building and delayed the start of the meet. So we're hoping it's, it's seamless and we can get in and, um, and get home with a victory. You know, in, in my recollection, the fans are far away, and it's um, like the fans are up here and the floor is down here. It's, it's uh, a little bit strange. It'd be like competing with all the seats pulled back in the PMAC, except for the second level and the third level. Um, and, I mean, that's my recollection, and, and that, it may not be how that really is at all. Because <laughs> they start, you know, after this many years, they start blending together. What does it say about this team that you can still have those kind of like stumbles and still finish 197 plus every every week? Well, it it you know it, it tells you that we're we're talented and we're deep and we're still exercising depth. I've got a couple of kids that I would still like to get in the floor lineup, and um, consistency wins. And we've not yet had a complete consistent meet, and they continue to fight. I mean, this is a um, a group of kids that really, they, they love what they're doing, they love LSU, and uh, they come in the gym every day and try to get that much better. What does that 197 streak mean to this program? Well, it's, it means a lot because a 197 is a benchmark score. You've got to be very good at each event to do that. Um, it was amazing that we did it this weekend and, and counted a huge break on bars. And you know, it just, it just says that uh, we're deep and we're strong 
and we're going to fight through every situation we find ourselves in. But 197 for that many meets in a row is really an accomplishment, and it's a it should be a badge of, a badge of honor that every one of these kids should wear. Uh, Dee Dee, forgive me. The freshman on bars who goes first is that Sammy? Sammy Durani. Can you talk about her progression? It seems like. Um, in the times I've, she's really confident when she sticks it and she seems like she's real confident especially on the bar and she's got the eye of the tiger when you look at that face and and you see and she doesn't say a lot and but man when she mounts that equipment you know you're fixing to see handstands and and great execution she is has gotten better and better and she's coming back off of a an acl injury and then we had to scope it she had a little piece of torn cartilage in there that they think may have been left from the the first injury so um once we got that done she was two weeks and back in the gym, which was absolutely remarkable and just hasn't missed a step. And she's chomping at the bits to do more, but we really can't afford to let her do more. We need to just keep her legs strong and sturdy so we can get through a period where we can really do um, progressions like should be done in the other events. But she's, when you look in her face, I mean, you get right in her face before she gets on that bars and it is piercing. Getting her to come here, obviously with her mom and everything, but having mm -hmm. her in Georgia, how was that it was pretty seamless. I mean, she she did not want to go to Georgia after you know they did what they did to her mother, and you know for her to land here, you know Jay and I both reached out. You know we've known Dana for a long time, and um, she had done a done a good job recruiting. And my former assistant coach Philip Ogletree was there with her, and um, it, she just didn't want to be there. And we we reached out and you know. And, and said, you know, we'd love to give her a home here, a place to land. And um, she's landed here, and she's very happy and thriving. And we see a lot of her mom and dad. And one of, one of the other of them travels to most of the meets. You talk a lot about that anchor position, but what does it say about her to be able to lead off? That, that lead off position. position. You know, I told the kids yesterday in our staff meeting, you know, there's no offense or defense in gymnastics, but there is a strategy. And you got the first part of your lineup, your first two people, and you got your last two people in the lineup. And it's the importance of the middle of that lineup that supports the momentum that these first ones hopefully create to get to the end of the lineup. And uh, Aaron McAdag on beam and, and Sammy on bars and it looks like Sarah Finnegan may have um, solidified a, a f her f starting role on, on, be on vaulting unless, you know, she upgrades her vault. And then Sarah Edwards on floor. So, you know, I, I think that those four spots will probably stay the same. I can't foresee Aaron McAdag being anything but first and Sammy anything but first on bars. You don't ever get some uh, friendly coaching advice from the, uh, from Sammy's mom. No, she just, she, we, we, she laughs and, you know, I would never dream of telling y'all what to do. <laughs> but, no, she's very happy that her daughter's here and that she's being loved and, and uh, her, her, not only her physical well-being, but also her emotional well-being is um, being taken well care of.